Hey, it's James Fathers Rights and Resources, hashtag how I got custody. Kind of in line with what I've been saying about learning to be quiet and listen and absorb what you're hearing instead of wanting to run your mouth all the time and actually speaking accurate, correct words when you're talking and using the actual words like when you're talking about a judge, say the word judge instead of attorney or teacher or person so that the people you're talking to can follow along like like me especially if we're in a console kind of in line with that is another thing that a lot of people don't do that you need to do you need to read you need to read your court orders a lot of people get a court order and they don't read it or they gloss over it and then they end up violating your protection order or committing contempt because they didn't read the stuff why do you think people put stuff in writing? Why do you draft up a contract? So that when you go into business with somebody or you hire somebody for, with a salary or you partner with somebody on anything, everybody knows the terms and what to follow. And then if you're lost, you go back to that contract. Why do they write down rules to Monopoly or Backgammon or Chess or a baseball game or Rules of the Road? So that everybody's on the same page. That's the same reason they write down court orders. And a court order is an order that governs your life with your kid. How the hell do you not have every word of it memorized? If you ever read anything in your life, the most important thing you could possibly read, outside of the Bible or something, that enhances your spiritual welfare. Really, the, in this life, the most important thing you could possibly read is the court order that governs your life with your kid. And I can't tell you how many people, I, I talk on a consult. Okay, what does your court order say? Or what does your court order say about this? I, I, I don't know. If you can half-assedly, halfway read English, there's no way you should not know your court order if it's been in place for more than a few days. You should read through that until you understand it. I shouldn't have to tell somebody who's been past the third grade that they should do this. Yet, my gender does it all the time. You know, when I consult with somebody, there should be at least some basics. You should know what the hell is going on in your case, what the hell happened. I have people who are like, I don't know what happened. I can't remember. And I can't. And then when I ask them detailed questions, they can recite it. It's just you're such an, in such an emotional state. You, you think, like, oh, this hurts to think about it, so I just block it out. I can't remember. I want you to figure it out, James. I need you to freaking tell me what the hell is going on so I can talk to you about your case. I can't talk to you about, you think a therapist, you think a doctor, like, you go to a doctor's office and you don't tell them where it hurts or what happened or how you feel? The doctor's supposed to just figure it out? You know, going to a doctor might be a scary thing. You might have type 2 diabetes. You might have cancer. But you have to tell them that so you can find the solution. Why the hell would you not tell somebody or know stuff enough to tell them what the hell is going on in your life or your case or what a court order says? You know, a lot of times I'll ask somebody, and this is always a serious question, what's the worst allegation from the other side? Uh, I don't know. Well, let me, let me, let me read it to you. In the Superior Court of California, case number, Bob Jones versus Sally Jones. Comes now Sally Jones and submits this declaration. Do you think I need to read all that shit or hear all that shit? Really? Do you th really think that? And then we get down to page five and they say, you know, the, the, I'm worried about the safety of the children and the, chi the father watching child porn in front of the kids or something. And I'll stop and I'll say, is that the worst allegation? Yeah, I couldn't believe she even said that. Why the hell couldn't you tell me five minutes ago, this is the worst allegation? I don't know. You're not taking this shit seriously enough. This is when people don't actually care. You're talking to somebody who can help you out, and you want to drag this out as long as freaking possible and turn every five minutes of information into 20 to 25 minutes so we can't get shit done because you're too much in your feelings to want to just... Tell me what happened. Or you didn't actually read the mother's accusations. Oh, oh I, I just trusted my attorney. Your attorney is your mouthpiece. You should read the stuff 
so your attorney can advocate for you and counter it. Your attorney needs to find out what you think about her allegations. Why the hell would you not read it? You need to know this shit. I know how traumatizing it is. Again, you don't have an excuse. I told you guys before, I used to hate walking out to my mailbox because I'm thinking, am I about to get another letter that talks about what a monster I am and all I want to do is be an involved dad and I got to hear the mother's allegations. He's crazy. He's violent. He's dangerous to women and children. I'm scared of him and all this bull crap. It's traumatizing, but I have to read it because on the other side of that paperwork, on the other side of that courtroom is my daughter. Get out of your pussy ass feelings and say, my child is more important than the pain I'm going through. I have to go through with it. And most of the stuff that you're afraid of, just like think about a kid on a three foot diving board or one meter diving board. Just about every kid who ever jumps off a diving board for the first time, you know, the kid walks out all slow and he's standing there. The longer he stands there and just looks at it, looks scary, the more scared he gets. And if he just jumps, he's realized it's not that bad. And then half the kids who do that, they turn around and run and they want to do it again. You're like that kid. You're sitting there like a little pussy scared of something you haven't even tried yet, such as reading a court order or reading the documents or getting help from me. You're scared to do it because it might hurt your feelings even more. Well, guess what's going to really hurt? When your cowardice or laziness or your pussy little feelings leads you to never see your kids ever again. You have to choose to fight through the discomfort and the time. Some people, they just don't like the time that it goes into. What the hell are you doing in your life outside of fighting for your kids? Going to the bar, going to the club, watching a football game? Does that matter in the end? If you fight for your kids and get custody of 50-50, you can watch all the damn football games you want. Stop trying to escape out of the reality of the world that you're in right now. You're in a world, you're in a death trap for your kids. You're in an Indiana Jones movie and you're stuck in a dungeon and your kids are outside the dungeon. You got to climb your way out and you got to fight because you didn't fight the first time the right way because you were a total pussy little, uh, you know, henpeck little simp. I don't want to talk bad about the mom. I wanted to work out. She just withheld the kids from you, falsely accused you of domestic violence. You went to jail for a few days. They, they, they dropped the case. And now she's saying you're a child molester because that didn't work. And you're like, I don't want to talk bad about the mom because, you know, she'll retaliate. You stupid dumbass. She's already done more than she can possibly do by trying to take your kids away. Wake the frick up. You know, half of my job here is splashing water on a guy's face and telling him, wake the hell up. Your life with your kid is on the line. And if you don't go rescue your kid, nobody's going to do it. And your, your boy is going to turn out to be a fruity little ballerina. Your girl is going to turn out to be a slut or a drug addict. Or your kid's going to flunk out of school. Or your kid's going to be a gangbanger. Because moms generally don't protect kids from that stuff nowadays. And dads generally do. I'm not saying there's not bad dads. I've never said that before either. You're the number one greatest protection for your child, and you're sitting there saying, I'm scared to protect my child. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, there's confrontation that comes with the court. Yeah, it's intimidating. But the more you do it, see, if you just looked at me, I told you I'm a warehouse worker who flunked out of college at the time that I got custody. I was a warehouse worker who flunked out of college, who had no court experience whatsoever, and I did not know more than 1% of what you hear and see in my free videos. All those four things. I was worse off than you and I fought and fought and fought. What's your pussy ass excuse? You don't have one. When you get a court order, you should read every single word of it. You don't have an excuse not to. There's guys who violate their, their, their uh, domestic violence protection order. They violate it because they didn't read it. And then they like, how can they do this to me? Because your dumbass didn't read what you were supposed to do. Well, it wasn't fair and there's no due process. Nobody gives a shit. There's an order. You got framed. Follow the order. When my baby's mom got a restraining order against me, she said, she said, I could talk to her co-worker and set up visitation. The judge is like, he wants to see his kid. Is there any way we can arrange that until you guys go to family court? We're in front of a criminal judge. She said he can call my coworker. Her coworker worked right next to her. I didn't, I didn't even think about calling that bitch. Because 
she's an earshot away from her, and I have freaking common sense, unlike most of you dumbasses, and I said, I don't even want to be put in a position where she can frame me and get me for violent protection, so I didn't even do it. Then she came to court and complained, I didn't contact her. Use some common sense and read this.